Welcome to the Age of Awakening. Please identify yourself. Enter. What's up, Triple P Nation? Welcome back to the podcast, where this week we're going to explore the tools, tactics, and strategies to help you achieve personal and business mastery. And we're going to take a look back at the first half of your year to see if you're on track, specifically if you're on target to hit your goals. And if you're not, why? And if you're not, how can we help you get back on track? And if those goals are no longer important to you, maybe life's changed, how can we set some new ones to make the second half of your year really productive and um, really get you prepared to succeed even more so in 2025. So this is something I've been doing for a really long time. Mid-year, I always do this process. I do it with my clients. So I want to take a few minutes to do it with you here today because I want you to win and to succeed at life so you can achieve your Triple P life, which is all about empowering your dreams, igniting your passion, and accelerating your prosperity. So who am I? Well, most of you probably know, but if you're new to the show, my name is Dr. Jay LaGuardia, and this is the Triple P Life Podcast. Our mission is helping people to grow in the four key areas of life, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. And uh, we've been at this now six years, six and a half years. Time flies. Love doing it. Really uh, honored it to be behind this mic each and every week. And I'm humbled each week that you guys choose to join me to take time out of your busy schedules. I know it's summer, vacation time. I totally get it. So, but it, it's, it's, you know, we get to uh, achieve, we get to succeed, we get to encourage and support each other. And that's what this community is about. So this week's episode is a little bit shorter in length. So if you're on the beach, it won't take you very long to get through this one. Okay, so let's start with this week's success snack, which is all about listening to understand, not to respond. Wait, what? (laughs) Listen, have you ever had a conversation with your spouse, your wife, your husband, significant other, and unbeknownst to you, he or she is kind of ticked off. You kind of get that vibe. You walk in the house like, "Uh uh-oh, the hell's going on here? What did I do? So you're like, I'm not really sure what's happening, but you feel like you're getting attacked right off the bat. He or she is upset and you're like, come on, what's happening here? Look, I know this has happened to you. It's happened to me. It's happened to all of us. Here's what happens, right? If you're like me, because right away, I'm like, what's going on? Immediately, I get defensive and I start to feel my heart rate going up, my blood pressure. I feel tension in my shoulders, like I'm embracing for battle. This is the fight or flight experience. And by the way, I have no idea and no mindset of fleeing. I'm there to fight. I'm ready to go. I'm not going anywhere. So now that I'm convinced I'm standing my ground and I'm ready to go at it, I'm like, okay, where's this going? What's happening? And I'm already beginning to prepare in my mind what I'm about to say. And I'm getting emotional. I know that the words are going to come out. They probably won't be as positive as I would like them to be. And this is going to take this whole situation from a level two to a level nine in a nanosecond because I never stopped to listen, to find out, and to diffuse her anger or disappointment or frustration. What do I do? I choose to meet it with my own anger, frustration, and disappointment, and that's what causes things to blow up and relationships to go off the rails. So here's the question, though. Does it need to? And what's the cost? What's the cost of being right? Is it hurt feelings? Is it resentment? Your lack of empathy? Your inability to understand, which leads to lost intimacy? And of course, long-term damage to you and your relationship. And at what reason? Just the need to be right? Guys, that's ego. That's crazy. And I've done it. I know better. I'm a little more aware now. I can't say I'm perfect at it. A good friend of mine once told me, he said, Jay, you're either working on your marriage or you're working on your divorce. Choose one. You can't have both. So I ask you this. What's more important to you, your ego or being right or being kind and understanding? 
So I have a suggestion for you. This is what's worked for me. When I start to feel I'm being attacked and innately I start to feel that resent or excuse me, I start to feel that anger welling up in me and I know I'm getting defensive. I stop, I take a deep breath in and I pause. And then I shut down the response aspect. And what I do is I focus on listening, but not listening to respond, listening to hear and to understand. So I'll let her talk as long as she needs to speak. And I'll wait for her to, to finish and I'll say, are you done? Right. But not in a, are you done? Right. Are you done? Or is there anything else you need to say? And then what I'll do is I'll repeat back to her everything that I just heard. So multiple things happen in this situation. Number one, they felt like they were heard. When you repeat back everything they just said, they know you now have an understanding. And we minimize or eliminate entirely the conflict of lack of understanding. Secondly, there's a level of empathy. And that begins to lower their anxiety, their frustration, their anger. And then from that point, my response is, what can I do? If I did something wrong, sometimes even if I didn't do anything wrong, what can I do to fix it, to make it better? Or do you just need to vent? So I let her choose. You need to do this. Okay, I'll do it. So sometimes do I have to crawl with the tail between my knees and, you know, just accept it? Yeah, but again, that's way better than not talking to each other for the rest of the night, sleeping on the couch, and then having it spiral out of control. Believe me, I know. I'll be married 36 years in September kind of figured some of this stuff out. So if you want to have a great relationship, learn how to listen, to understand, and not to respond. And you can use this in any aspect of your life, in business, with partners. It's so powerful. And you will gain great affinity with uh, your partners and your spouses and your team members and so on and so forth. And you will truly become a heartfelt leader. Okay, guys, as I mentioned at the top of the podcast, I want to talk about our mid-year review. All intentional, successful people always take stock and assess their progress in each areas of their lives. So whether it's business or your health or uh, your finances, your relationship, you know, it's great to do it monthly, quarterly, biannually, and of course, at the end of the year in preparation to the oncoming new year. So we're at the halfway point. So we have a lot of data to assess, are we on track with the goals that we established moving into 2024? Now, you guys know I wrote my book, Change Your Mind, Change Your Destiny, The Eight Habits of Success. The eighth habit is becoming a goal slayer. Now, the act of writing goals, having written goals, is something very unique to a very small percent of the population. Only 3% of the people have goals, and of that 3%, only 10% have written goals. So you're talking such an infinitesimal small amount of people who literally have written goals. That's why these are high achievers. And I know if you're listening to this show, you're one of them because you understand the importance of this very critical success element. So it's important for us to step back, to analyze, to assess, and to review. Because to take the same steps moving forward, if we're off track, is insane. If we're on track, but you only know if you're assessing, then great, let's keep going. And if we're close to achieving that goal before the end of the year, do we need to up it? Do we need to change it? Do we need to modify in any way to keep us moving in a more rapid pace? Maybe instead of 100% growth, maybe we can do 125% growth in our business this year. Just giving you some clear examples, okay? So here's what we do. I look at first, I look at my business goals. I review my business financial records by examining bank statements, financial statements, P&L reports. That's why, you know, here we are, we're mid-July when I'm doing this podcast. You should have your uh, second quarter P&L in hand. So you want to look at that and assess, look at your margins. Are you hitting your targets for the year? Is your cash flow good? What does your balance sheet look like? You want to compare them to the, to the targets that you set beginning of the year and then identify any discrepancies. If you're off 10%, okay, let's look at our lead generation. Is our lead generation creating enough new business in where we can generate new customers and new revenue? 
And if it's not, maybe it's a marketing issue. Or maybe your leads are fine, but your conversion's poor. And so therefore, it's your sales process we need to look at. So what action steps do we need to take? What do we need to improve upon? What skill set do we need to sharpen ourselves on? This is the intentional actions of only successful people. See, most people let life happen to them, right? Life happens to them. They don't embrace life and take on life and make life happen. But you guys do. That's why you listen to this podcast. So you want to compare, compare your targets, identify any uh, discrepancy within those targets. You need to look at the action steps and see if they're correct. Now, what if you've already achieved your goals for the year? Some people have already hit their goals in month five. Typically, what I find with these people is they set small goals because they would rather set small goals and hit them than to set large goals and not hit them. Well, I don't know who said it, but they said it's, it's better to shoot for the moon, come up short, and be amongst the stars. I don't recall who said that, but it's a great quote, and it's so true. Look, I'd rather you achieve goals than not achieve goals and have written goals. But if you're crushing your goals that quickly, like if you've already hit them, you need to set yourself bigger goals because you're capable of a whole lot more. And now you should have some credence to know, right? You should have some cred that you can do it and you can even draw more out of yourself. There's more within you that you can achieve. So the next thing I want to do is I want to evaluate my KPIs right? These my key performance indicators. I want to ex assess and, and um, review to see if they're aligned with my business objectives, right? And then adjust my strategies based on the data. Again, lead generation, new client, sales, right? What's my sales? What's my close percentage? What's my net revenue per customer? What's my overhead percent? How much overhead do I need or how much um, does each customer to attain cost? What's my marketing budget? Again, the most successful business owners know their numbers. And if you can't repeat these numbers, it's not that you're a bad person. You just need to take time to, to, to really understand, deep dive, and look at these on a regular basis. You should have someone on your team, especially if you're a small business, who is generating these numbers for you weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annually. They should present those numbers for you, and then you should review those with your department heads. And this is where we create cross-accountability, and then we can set goals for each of the departments. Because sometimes maybe it's the marketing department, or it's the collections department, or the finance department that's underperforming that's causing our entire organization to suffer. Now, another great way is to review by customer feedback. You know, uh, a few weeks ago when I did my series on entrepreneurship, I talked about the importance of customer surveys, which I absolutely love because it allows you to gather and analyze customer data so you can understand their satisfaction levels and then identify the areas in which you need to improve. I believe that any information your customers gives to you, positive or negative, is gold. So embrace that, use that information that's going to provide you the tools and foundation to know what you need to focus on. Now, the next level, the fourth level is your team performance. This is a great time to conduct performance reviews with your teams. Now, I want to say with caution, a lot of times when we do a uh, performance review with our teams, the natural assumption by the team member is I'm getting a raise and nothing could be further from the truth. For me, the simple fact that someone has been there a long time, has shown great loyalty, is not in of itself a reason for a raise. Now, I will consider that, but in of itself, it's not a consideration for a raise. A raise only occurs when the individual has shown that they have created more value within the business to show that their value and, and, and need to the company. In other words, their value within the company is improving. And so therefore they become invaluable if I was to lose them. I couldn't imagine losing them. So it's got to be based on your KPIs. Are they hitting their own KPIs? And everyone on their team should have KPIs. So we do these performance reviews, not just from attitude and culture, but are, are they hitting these targets? And if they are, great, awesome. Be more than happy to reward them financially. And it doesn't have to always be raises. It could be bonuses, which then will help keep your overhead uh, more manageable. Because of course, we know employee wages is 
the number one uh, expense most small businesses will face. And the last one for our business is doing a market analysis. Where is your industry mid-year? Have there been new advances, new trends, new changes to the competition, to the landscape that requires you to look at some strategic adjustments within your businesses? Are there new products and services that are out there that you're missing out of that your clients really would utilize? So think about in terms of market analysis. So let's look at another category. And these are more you know, generic, the life goals aspect. And this is where we want to reflect upon our personal achievements. This is where you want to take time to look back and, and, and think about, okay, where am I as far as my personal goals? And, you know, if it was to, again, learn how to become a better communicator and I completed the course, well, you know what? Celebrate that. No matter how small your victory, the victory is the fuel for the next level of success. But you have to stop and acknowledge it. You have to take a moment to appreciate it. And sometimes that all, that's all it is. Sometimes you reward yourself with something, you know, um, that's an outside tangible thing that maybe you're going to take your spouse on a long weekend for achieving a sales record or, you know, maybe solving a, um, dealing with a, a relationship that had gone sour and, and now you've repaired it and you feel good about it and you're, you're back building that relationship again. Again, something to, to celebrate upon. So. Look at your health, review your health and fitness goals, assess your physical activity. Are you hitting your metrics when it comes to your workouts? How many times you're working out a week? Are you seeing gains in your resistance training? Are you seeing gains in your flexibility? Are you seeing gains in your VO2 max? Are you seeing gains on your um, uh, body comp? Are you seeing a reduction in weight or maybe not in so much weight, but your BMI? Are you seeing gains in your lean muscle mass, right? If you're doing it, fantastic. If not, we need to make some adjustments to our routine, or maybe we need to see, get some help from somebody. Again, new actions. It's all about creating new actions if we're not on track. And then, of course, like we did with our success stack today, our relationship assessment. What's the quality of your most important relationships? Are they strong, right? Is there a level of transparency, of trust, love? Unconditional love with your partner, with your kids, with your friends. Are there any relationships that have gone off the rails that you need to repair? And it may have nothing to do with you. Maybe it's just you who initiates the response to bring that and repair that relationship so you can enjoy each other's company again. Or maybe it's just relationships that you need to end, relationships that you're hanging on to that no longer serve you, that are toxic in your life, just like in your business. Are there relationships with your team, certain people on your team that you're keeping there for convenience, not because they add value and perhaps they even undermine the culture that you're trying to create. So it's not just, what do I need to repair? Who do I need to let go? Who do I need to spend more quality time with? Am I creating balance in my home life and my work life? Do I take enough time with my family and am I present with them? Am I focused when I'm with them or is my time and my attention diverted. Now, how about your financial goals, guys? Remember I said reviewing your budget at work? What about or uh, your business or work? What about at home? Are you hitting your savings targets? Are you hitting your investment targets? Do you need to adjust your financial plan to ensure that you are saving more? So remember the wealth triangle, right? We have cash flow at the top, at the pinnacle, and in the lower left corner, we have savings. So cash flow, drive it into savings, and then to the right edge of the triangle is investments. And these investments are in appreciating revenue producing assets. And then that triangle keeps filling itself. So now we got cash flow coming in. And if we're hitting our target revenue goals in business and life, that cash flow increases, which means we have more to save, more to invest, more to invest, more passive revenue. And that cycle really starts to accelerate. Now we start to experience the velocity of money. How about, have you done anything to teach your kids about money? Have you done anything to educate them about good financial health? I know my, grandma, my granddaughter had a recent birthday and she got some money and I know her parents put that money away for her. But I said to her, I said, what's the benefit of putting that money in an account or in this situation, in an investment account where, she, where that money is put? 
And of course, she's only seven. She doesn't quite understand. So I explained to her the concept of interest. And I was using things that are on the table. And I said, well, if you put this here, right, and um, put this $20 here, and you put it over here in this box, and you leave it there for a year, and someone pays you to leave it there, now I have this plus this. And she looked at me, she goes, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yes, it is. And if you leave it there over a period of time with the rule of 72, that money doubles in the rule of 72 called compound interest. So she got a little bit of it, but I will continue to work on her because having good money skills is the responsibility of you and I to teach our kids and our community. And then skill development. Are you working on acquiring new or getting better at skills and knowledge? What books have you read? What have you done to expand your mindset? I know all of you guys, because I talked to you, right, set out a goal to read X amount of books. Well, that's awesome. But if you read a bunch of books and you get nothing out of it, what's the point of reading 20 books or 24 books to a month in a year if you got nothing out of it? I'd rather you read one that's life-changing, that shifts your headspace, your mindset, and your actions than reading 24. Have you read any books that have inspired you? And if not, I would strongly suggest, reach out to me. Email me, Dr. J, Triple P. Like, I could probably give you a ton, a list here right now, but I'd rather you email me and I'd rather give you suggestions based on what you're interested in. So, Dr. J, Triple P Life. And then finally, guys, think in terms of combined strategies. Think about setting some new goals. So, based on the review that you did, I want you to set new or adjust the goals that you currently have for the second half of the year. Now, make sure they are specific, right? You know the process, there's the SMART process, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. I do something even simpler, right? It's the what is it, it's the why, it's the how, and the when. So what? What is it that I want to ac uh, accomplish? The why. You got to know why. The why is the leverage, right? Why are you going to get up early in the morning to go work out? If you want to understand what the benefit of working out is and how it's going to help you, serve you, serve your family, be there for your family, provide for your family, make you feel good, give you more confidence, give you more energy, feel sexier in the bedroom, whatever it is. What is the why? If you don't know the why, I guarantee you will never, ever stick with your goals. So, but mine, like I said, is what, why, and then how. How are you going to do it? What are the action steps? And break it down, right? So you want to create an action plan. You want to develop a detailed action plan outlining the steps needed to achieve and revise each of your goals. And then break down larger goals into smaller manageable goals. So if it's something you're going to accomplish over the next six months, what can you do this week? Right? So there is 52 weeks in a year. There's 26 weeks in a half year. We're two weeks through uh, July. So 24 weeks, what can I do over the next 24 weeks incrementally get me where I need to be by the end of the year? Now, don't forget time management. You want to reassess how you manage your time. You need to use tools like your calendars and planners or apps. Man, I love using the apps now because it's just so convenient. I get you know alerts on my phone to make sure that uh, I'm aware of where I need to be, what I need to do, who I need to do it with, and get, and get scheduled tasks done. So I ensure that I stay focused on my highest priorities. Remember, your highest priorities need to align with your highest values. If they are, the likelihood that you achieve the goals that you want goes up exponentially. Then think about, especially for those who may have struggled with some of your goals, about acquiring an accountability partner. Now, that's somebody you know who can partner with you, that can hold you accountable, that can call you out maybe when you're off track, give you a pat on the back when you need a, you know, a pat on the back or kick in the butt when you need a kick in the butt. But somebody you feel ultimately confident in that's non-judgmental, that you can share some intimate details, that's not going to judge you, as I mentioned, will be there and support you and, and is invested in your outcome as much as you are. And then have regular check-ins so they can help you stay motivated. And then you can help them stay motivated, right? Can you be someone else's accountability partner? And then finally, mindfulness. I want you to incorporate mindfulness practices, regular reflections into your routines, because we know this is going to help you maintain your clarity. It's going to reduce your stress. It's going to help you stay aligned with your overall vision. And that's the key. If you see the target, you know where it is, 
You know what you need to do based on the action steps. You're going to get there. And the last step is you got to align the emotion with the action step. So what and how will you feel when you achieve that goal? Exuberance, elation, excitement, inspiration, accomplishment. Will you feel proud? Once you understand the emotions you're going to experience upon completion of the goal, that is the ultimate alignment of vision, thought, energy, result. So guys, take these steps. Make some mid-year alterations and corrections if necessary. Stay proactive. Make necessary adjustments. This is going to increase the likelihood of you achieving all your business life goals this year. And by the end of the year, you can look back and say, man, this was incredibly successful. And if we play a little small part in it, awesome. Congratulations. I'm, I'm thrilled about that. And uh, if this show you found valuable and if you're achieving some of your goals because some of the content and information that we're sharing, please go to your favorite podcast app. Give us a, uh, a review. Let us know what you think. It means the world to us. Give us a five-star rating of, of sure. Hit subscribe, hit like, follow, so you know when the next great episode is going to drop here. And if you're on the YouTube, it's always great seeing you guys. Leave your comments below. I do always look at them and respond. And again, Email me, Dr. J at Triple P Life. If you have questions, recommendations on books, whatever content you want me to cover, let me know. Be happy to hear from you. So listen, enjoy the rest of your summer holiday week here. Have an incredible you know, day. Have an incredible week. And like I always say, you be you. Just be the best you. And I promise you will always empower your dreams, ignite your passion, and accelerate your prosperity. Until next time, guys, be welcome.